if you look at the Vril trucks, and I don't know if, how much you've looked into that, but you see Vril, the Vril 1, Vril 2, there's, there's, out, out, there's inlet ports and outlet ports. They were air breathers. They were using vortex flow around the craft to create, for instance, look, um, instead of uh, taking Bernoulli's principle or deflection or whatever you want to do where you say, okay, I've got uh, pressure differential between the upper and lower surface of the wing, right? If you stop thinking about that linearly like we all do and get away from, oh, a sailplane's the most efficient shape to a tornado's the most efficient shape, well, then you start thinking, well, shoot, Let's say I'm going to create a tornadic motion around the craft going the wrong way, like right? upside down tornado. You have created almost a vacuum above the craft. We can build these engines and they work beautifully, right? Yeah. Once you step away from Newton Newtonian physics and apply it to these engines, that's when the bottom falls out. And it's very, very simple. This is what happened to the Schorberger Repulsion. The Schorberger Re uh, Repulsion went inertia. At the same time, that's when they started playing with mercury. And if you look in the history, they um, they were transporting mercury down to the Antarctic at the end of the world, in, uh, end, end of World War II in, in, in the U-boats. In fact, one was sunk and released a whole bunch of mercury. Uh, um, I think it was off uh, South America. Why were they transporting mercury? Why did 200 U-boats go missing? Well, you're talking about the old... Why did Admiral Byrd go down to Antarctic? All this came out of the Brill program, that, which goes right back to the, the Schorberger Repulsion. This is where it comes out of just talk into reality. I got there because I discovered inertial propulsion, then I discovered the Schorberger, then I discovered his Repulsion, then I discovered what happened with the Brill program, and it correlates with his engine. So I already know that the engine works, that it is an inertial system, and now we got these things called Brillcraft, which they were based on something that they had pictures of these things, but they couldn't prove what they were using to power them. Around Brill 3, that's when the inlet and outlet ports went away. That's when they went inertial, and that's when they went to space. Because inertial is a space drive, right? It's a 1G acceleration space drive. At that point, Brill 3, what, in the 19 bloody 40s? They were able to go to Mars. They were able to go to any planets in, in this solar system at 1G. And yeah, they probably lost some craft. The proof is only because I came at it from the science and the engine. And, and the proof is there because I understand what they did with the inertia. Um, there's no question that they had enough power with a Mercury Vortex engine to do anything they wanted to do at 1G. Now, I'm sure that led to... They had more exotic stuff. I mean, the Nazi Bell was more exotic, right? They wouldn't have just stopped at Schorberger, but that sure gave them the initial technology to get to space.